my god, what have I done? What have I done? This used to be such a neat looking model and now... What happened? Oh, it's supposed to be an abandoned tank sitting in a scrapyard and turns out painting rust effects is a lot of fun. That's what happened. So get your puns ready because this is gonna be quite interrusting. <laughs> Yo, what's up my mates? If you're slightly shocked by this sudden turn of events, then you're not alone. I was surprised myself by how this rusting stage turned out. But not in a bad way, not at all. Like I said in one of my videos, I don't know which one, or actually I don't know if I even said it before, I always have a clear idea about how the model should look, but I can never imagine the result vividly. Um, clearly. You know what I mean? So even though I knew this model is gonna be completely corroded, I still wasn't able to see a clear picture in my head. Maybe that's a good thing, because I'll always be surprised, right? Anyway, I think this model just experienced the most drastic transformation in its life, but that still doesn't mean the work is done. No, 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 we still have to do something with the wheels, tracks, exhaust and some dust stones, but those will be of course done in the upcoming videos. So let's get started and see how this goes. This time I'll be mostly using Ammo's Light Rust Wash. Streaking rust effects will also come in handy, but not as much as I expected. Here's a small tip, always make sure to shake your enamels before using them, so the paint inside will mix properly. At first I wanted to apply the paint straight from the bottle, but this was so unpractical and dangerous that I just gave up. So instead I used the large brush to transfer the paint into my palette. Same with the lighter rust tone. And of course the usual two pools of enamel thinner, one for blending, one for brush cleaning. Let's begin. I'm gonna show you how to render this side panel and the word render is pretty accurate in this case, because looking at this plate and the rest of the model, it just reminds me of Mike Rinaldi's rendering style. So I'll be mostly using the light rust wash because it works pretty well with the desaturated yellow color of the tank. It's also not very opaque, so it will be easier to create subtle rust effects, if needed, of course. Note how I'm only applying the paint around chipped parts. This is very important if you want to create a convincing corroded chipping effect. It's also a very good idea to work in smaller sections, like in this case I divided the plate into two parts. This way I'll stay more focused and there won't be any risk of paints drying up too soon if I work slowly. Now I switched to the darker rust streaking effect and added small dots in the center of the large chips. This paint is thicker and more opaque, so only small amounts are needed. Now we can start blending. It's been about 10 or 15 minutes since I started applying the paint. It's something worth mentioning because some of you mates keep asking about this. Basically, as soon as the paint is dry to the touch, you can start blending it. Working with enamels is very easy and you only need small amounts of enamel thinner to gently reactivate the dried up paint. Then carefully tap the edges of the rust stain to feather it. If you accidentally added too much paint here and there, you can just wipe the excess away and continue working. When you're blending the larger stains with dark rust tone in the middle, make sure to carefully blend them into each other. That way you'll get a more tonal variety. Once the thinner evaporates, the result will be an authentic matte corroded surface. And another frequently asked question, no, you don't need to protect this layer with varnish, dull coat or anything like that. After 24 hours, it will be impossible to do anything with it. In fact, if you're careful enough and not too heavy handed, you can start layering additional enamels on top of this right after you're done blending. Take a look. This is immediately after I was done blending. I felt the effect could be slightly enhanced in a few places, so I decided to add more. And now, without waiting for the paint to dry, I immediately started blending. This form of wet blending is harder to control because the paint will keep moving around and I only recommend it if you want to slightly tweak your effects, like I'm doing here. And when I was done with that, I felt like the effect was too much in a few places, so using a larger brush and some enamel thinner, I went over the entire surface and removed small amount of the rust paint. 
This can also show you how much you can remove after less than an hour. It's not much, so you can stop worrying about protecting your weathering with varnishes. Give it more time, ideally 24 hours, and the paint will be rock solid. Ok, so while I'm taking a small break, let's finish the rest of this plate. Take it as a small recap of all the techniques described up to this point. It's also important to add rust tones over the cross section of the plate. This part has a lot of texture in form of flame cut marks, so it will create pretty interesting effects. Alright, so now I have both sides done. Let's now take a look at some more interesting effects. That missing fender section needs some heavier rust tones in order to achieve that nice heavily corroded look. Again I'm mostly using the light rust wash and the darker streaking effect is being used just in small amounts to add more tones. This is now a small visual detail that makes the model more interesting and also tells the viewer that hey something was probably here. Or if not at least like hey this is slightly different than the rest of the model. For this next step I have to mix the light rust wash with rusty wilder pigments because for some reason the ammo enamel paints dry to a glossy finish when applied over Vallejo paints. Enamels can be sometimes unpredictable like this, but what matters is when we know how to work our way around the issue and make them work. Now I can apply this heavy rust wash over all those dark grey steel parts which I painted in the chipping episode. If you want to create awesome looking rusted steel effects in just two easy steps, you just have to paint the base coat with dark grey acrylic paint and then add heavy enamel rust wash on top of it. It's such a cool technique and I use it all the time, so we'll be seeing this on my channel a lot. It also works great on tools like shovels, crowbars and other stuff. Because we added some pigments into the paint, the result has very fine texture. Thanks to that it literally absorbs this random layer of light rust wash. I'm adding it in just small amounts here and there in order to add more tones to the surface and because this paint is quite thin, I'm actually applying and blending it at the same time. And when it all dries up it will look like this. Isn't that cool? Ok so back to the main topic. Here I'm blending the enamel rust tones over the secondary gun barrel and I decided to make the effect more dense. I simply painted larger spots of rust and now I'm carefully blending them making sure not to remove too much. This will visually separate the gun from the rest of the tank. It's a small thing which I observed from some reference pictures. Horizontal surfaces can be overall more rusty because unlike vertical surfaces where water just runs down, these can hold moisture for longer periods of time. You can get very creative while adding and blending rust on your model. I for example created more contrast between the entire engine deck and the roof of the fighting compartment. My idea was that those individual engine panels were made from thinner plates and they have many panel lines, so more places where water can collect, thus resulting in more corrosion. Rust can be also used to create contrast between individual panels that sit next to each other. I for example added much more rust tones over the air intake panels. Ok, on a completely different note, the roof was rusted very sparingly. I didn't paint that many chips here in the first place, so naturally there are less places where rust can be present. You can clearly see how there's more rust around the turret hatches. This is because there's more chipping around them. Here I'm also using the large brush to gently tone the effect down by removing small amount of the paint, just like I showed you on the side plate. Let's now create some more interesting stuff. This is washable dust acrylic paint from ammo. 
It's a paint that can be blended with water after it dries up. These are exposed weld beads. They can look like a total mess in real life, and they have this dusty outline. I've been told that's the effect of heat affecting the surrounding metal, but I'm no welder, so I cannot confirm. This paint seems like the perfect tool for the task, so I painted the outline of each weld in a quite messy manner. Then I blended the edges with tap water. Turns out I probably applied the paint very thick because it was quite problematic to blend it and I was only partially successful, so if you try this at home, try it on a piece of scrap plastic or something and probably try thinning it down with a drop of water. Anyway, after much struggle the result is quite okay. Next I painted the center of each stain with the light rust wash and carefully blended the edges. And before you ask this question in the comments, the reason why I'm using the washable dust is so I can work fast. I could paint the dusty outline with enamels or oils, sure, but I'd have to wait for at least an hour until they were dry enough. Looking pretty cool already. Let's now paint the welds with Mr. Color Chrome Silver. This is a lacquer based paint so I thinned it down with one drop of lacquer thinner and used my finest chipping brush to paint just the weld beads. This is nothing hard but it's always good to have a steady hand and some patience. And to make the effect complete I added a tiny amount of enamel wash for German dark yellow to tone the silver shine down a little and to also emphasize the weld texture. And to also also create that faint burnt stain around the weld bead. Doesn't look very bad at all. By the way I used the same steel and weld techniques on the underside of the turret. It kept popping up in the 360 shots on the mirror surface and it didn't look very nice without any paint. And this was a quick 10 minute fix and now I can sleep more peacefully. So while I was painting all those details I also decided it was time to paint the periscopes with dark grey acrylic paint. These were then covered with a drop of enamel gloss varnish and also the brake light. The inside was painted silver, then I added the clear lens from the kit and added a drop of Tamiya clear red on top of it. Simple. And because you're probably looking at those rust streaks on the fender, let's take a look at those. For these effects I used the streaking brusher from Ammo. A rust tone of course. However, the integrated brush is quite large for my needs and the result won't be very precise. It's okay if you want to create heavy rust streaks, but I need mine to be very small. This is nowhere near the precision I need for this step. So instead I deposited small amount of the paint on my palette and used this cheap 10-0 Italeri brush to paint and blend the streaks. Turns out this step is very hard to film and I wasn't very comfortable while filming this, but you can be sure I'm doing my best right now. So as you can see the streaks need to be very thin, like half a millimeter, and short as well. That's because we need a very small amount of paint if we want to create fine streaks. Also note how I'm painting them running from the largest chips and how their placement is very random. It's very important to have only the tiniest amount of enamel thinner in your brush, otherwise the thinner will spill over the surface and ruin the streak. The brush should be almost dry, but just almost, not completely. Another extremely important thing is to blend the streaks vertically. If you deviate even slightly from a 90 degree angle the result will be very unconvincing. This can get annoying very fast, but it is what it is and it has to be done correctly. I can imagine how hard this has to be if your tank is placed in a diorama and it is resting on a slope. Laws of physics, you can't fool those. So when I'm done blending from one side it's time to flip the model around and blend them from the other side. This is another important process if you want nice, sharp and fine streaks. You can't just blend them in one quick swipe down, but rather from both sides. At least that's how it works for me and I don't know any better. 
But truth be told, this is a pretty clever method because it allows you to correct their direction. And it's very easy to go sideways. So any chance to get that nice 90 degrees is always welcome. And one more time from the other side. Like I said, I wasn't very comfortable while filming this and I had to be twisted in a very unnatural body horror position, so the result isn't the best I can do. And I had to make some tiny corrections off screen to get this result. The process was the same on the rest of the tank. It gets slightly boring very fast, but the result looks just so good that it's totally worth the effort, at least in my opinion. Fun times. So let's wrap this up real quick. I painted some random remnants of white interior paint around this visor opening. The visor itself was chipped and weathered the same way as the tank, and I was now able to glue it to the model with small amount of super glue. The towing hook at the back was the same story. Oh, and I also painted the exhaust protruding from the hull. I still haven't painted the big muffler, but that one deserves its own video, which won't be part of this series, but a standalone weathering tutorial, so keep an eye out for that. And that's it for now, my friends. One thing I always notice while painting rust is that it's a pretty simple and relaxing technique, but it's time consuming. I, for example, spend almost the same amount of time painting rust as I do when I'm painting chips. But it's also because, and this is again just my personal thing, I think it's quite important to take breaks quite often to sort of step away from the model for a bit. Because I often feel like my brain just starts shutting off and I work on autopilot. And that's something you don't want while doing such an important technique that requires a lot of creativity. So yeah, that's something worth keeping in mind. Um... Again, this model represents an abandoned vehicle that's been sitting under the sun for a few months, so that's the reason why it's so rusty. Yes, the main gun cover is my own artistic license, it probably didn't look exactly like this, and... well, I guess that's all. So if you enjoyed this video or you even found it helpful, please make sure to help me in return by giving this video a like, leaving a comment and subscribing if you haven't yet because I have more content like this coming your way. Thank you all for watching, I'll see you mates in the next one and here are some bloopers. Oh my god, what have I... <laughs> oh my god, what have I done? What have I done? This is... <laughs> oh my god. <clears throat> Oh my god, what... <laughs> oh my god, what have I done? What have I done? <laughs> so get your puns ready be so get your pun... <laughs> so get your puns ready because this is gonna be quite interesting. <laughs> at first I... at first I wanted... <clears throat> at first I wanted to apply the paint straight from the bottle, but this was so unprac... <laughs> <laughs> Once the thinner evaporates, the result will be enough. <clears throat> Once the thinner... <clears throat> Rust can be also used to create contrast between individual panels that sit... Like, that sit. This is nowhere near the precision. <laughs> and I was now able... and I was now... And, and I was now able to... But truth be told, this is a pretty clever method because it allows you to create...